Hey guys, and welcome back to the Elevate HD podcast. Today, this is going to be a solo episode with your host, Holly Dabbage. I am at Holly underscore Physique Collective on Instagram. If you don't know me and you want to follow me, you can check me out there. But today I wanted to cover kind of an update of where I'm at in my off season, as well as the current struggles, the wins, the celebrations, everything I've been going through since basically I competed. So my last show from my last season was October 15th in 2022. So that was the PCA British finals. So I'm about five months post-show now, which is crazy to think about because it feels like no time has gone by, but at the same time, it feels like so much has changed. and I'm in a completely different like mindset, if that makes sense. Um, so I thought I'd give you a run through of where I'm at currently. Now, I did run through this in a previous podcast, but coming out of my show season in October was incredibly difficult for me. And my post show this time around was very difficult. Now, I didn't go down the traditional route of overeating or binging or gaining too much too soon. It was kind of the opposite, to be honest, um, where I stayed very lean for a very long period of time, um, partly because I love being lean. And to be honest, for me, prep is the easiest part of bodybuilding. And the off season is the hardest part for me. It's the greatest challenge mentally and physically for me. Um, so by the end of the prep, I was eating like 21, 2200 calories and maintaining a stage lean physique, which I found relatively easy to do as well as zero cardio. I was only doing like 12 and a half thousand steps a day, 2200 calories. I find it quite easy to maintain. So when my calories started to go up and the goal was to put on necessary body fat, because we know like a stage lean physique isn't optimal in terms of health, especially for females and their hormone, their hormonal health as well. Um, so as we started to change the goal to gaining weight, I found that incredibly difficult because I had been identifying myself as a lean person and as a competitor, as a bikini girl for so long that when the goal switched and I was no longer that girl on prep, that lean girl, I kind of lost a sense of my identity in a way. Um, and because I devoted my whole year to the prep, I, I didn't really have the fundamentals in place to build upon when that identity of being lean was gone um so I kind of lost myself for a while to be honest and November and December were incredibly difficult months for me and um, there was a lot of change in my life uh, a lot of personal change as well as I started a new job so I was finishing up my old job to get ready for my new job so I was kind of in the transition there as well as that I moved house so I moved from Manchester city centre from an apartment into a house in the suburbs so that was incredibly stressful as well. People always say that a house move is just as stressful as like a loss in the family or like a grievance. And you think that sounds crazy and until you actually do it. Now, fortunately, my parents were amazing and they flew over from Ireland for a weekend to help me move. And without them, I don't know how I would have done it because my dad, he owns a food, well, my parents own a food business and my dad is used to driving big vans. So he rented a massive van, put my whole life in the back of the van and drove out to my new home, which I was very grateful for. So without them, uh, I would have been lost. But also on the first night when we slept in the house for the first night, we had uh, a pipe break and there was water flooding all over the kitchen. And that was not ideal. So it was a bit of a stressful way to end the year. Um, so, yeah, I was I, I find it incredibly difficult. And I also felt a bit of pressure that I, I probably put on myself in a way that throughout my previous competing preps off seasons post shows I've always documented every single part of the process like I've done weekly check-ins on my Instagram feed for years now where regardless of whether I'm an off season or prep I update people and I found that doing those updates I had a lot of pressure on myself because I was putting up these updates and I wasn't gaining any weight I was looking super lean I was putting up like anonymous question boxes and a lot of people were asking me like why are you still so lean um, and I kind of started to feel a bit embarrassed, to be honest, to put up those updates saying, you know, nothing has changed. I've not gained any weight. I'm kind of holding on to my lean physique because I'm afraid to let go of it. Um, and then at Christmas, I went to Brussels for a whole weekend with my family, which is my first holiday since February of 2020, which is crazy. So I went away for a weekend. Um, obviously, I was still quite sensitive at that point to gaining weight. And I was still very lean. So I probably was overly cautious about eating then like I didn't track anything I still ate it went out to eat with my family you know I ate the meals but I was probably a bit too 
considerate of what the calories were. I probably overestimated things. Um, I was probably airing too much on the side of caution. And I came back to Ireland for the rest of Christmas. I checked in on the Wednesday and I was one kilo above stage weight again. Uh, and I sent the video to Joe. I put it up on my Instagram as a reel and I just looked at it and I was like, I'm so embarrassed. I'm so, so embarrassed that I'm meant to be not not a role model, but I'm a coach, I'm an educator, I'm a part of the Physique Collective. I'm meant to kind of lead the way in what people should be doing. And I've been doing this for five years. Like I, I've been a competitor for a while. I'm not a first timer, so I, I should have this down. Um, but it just goes to show that, you know, post-show is always a struggle and you might get better at managing the struggles, but also the struggles change every single time. So you have new challenges each time. Um, so that was the kind of slap on the wrist I needed. And I got a good stern talking to from Joe as well telling me to basically get my shit together and I have a relationship with Joe where we are very close so he can say these things to me and he can be honest and I can take it on board and there's never any bad blood because I want him to be honest because why would I pay him if I don't want him to tell it, tell me what he thinks and um, so after that I started committing I started you know eating all my food my food was building up uh, I started gaining the weight and initially it was quite slow so we had to build up my food quite substantially before any weight started to come on so by the height of it, I was eating like 3,300 calories a day plus a 200 calorie intro workout in the form of uh, cyclic dext dextrin on my training days. Um, and I started then gaining quite rapidly. So I was gaining around a kilo a week, which was a, quite a bit more than the projected kind of goal rate of gain we wanted. Like my rate of gain goal that we set is around 0.25 to 0.5% of body weight per week. And that was close to like 2% of body weight per week. So it really was like, two to four times more than I should have been doing so I got quite uncomfortable quite quickly um and it was probably around March time where I started to feel god I do not feel comfortable in how I feel and how I look right now um and I was edging on and I literally just listened to that Jasmine podcast that she just put up and she said that she feels that sometimes scale weights leave her kind of they remind you of times in your life when you were that scale weight that wasn't a good time. And for me, in, when was it? 2021 was probably the hardest year of my life for many reasons. Um, and I gained a lot of weight in not not on purpose at all. Um, it was not purposeful. It was not intentional. Um, and I got up to my heaviest weight of nearly 70 kilos. And for someone who's five foot four and like a small built female, that was a lot of weight for me and that was not intentional and that was wrapped up with a lot of emotion a lot of stress a lot of overwhelm so whenever I eat close to that point or close-ish to that point I start to remember and be reminded of that time in my life when I was so low my body image was in the gutter um I was very sad I was very like I was going through a really tough time I was really uh stressed and it reminds me of that time so when I started climbing up in weight and getting not I'm not close to that weight now like I probably got to my peak before I started this mini cut which I'll talk in a bit got to my peak of around 64 I think it was 64.8 kilos was my highest I was like I need to cut this here because I don't want to get any heavier than this because this is kind of the the extent of which I'm want, going to go this is the maximum I am comfortable with before you know we start to diet again so that was that but Coming out of the post show, there was a few things I did that really helped me to settle in to my off season and to re-identify myself, not just as either I'm on prep or I'm an off season, but I'm a human, <laughs> which is very important because we are all humans and we all have many functions and many facets of our life and many positives and many skills and talents that have nothing to do with body composition. So I worked really hard to realign myself with this and remind myself of everything I am um, known for everything I am good at everything that makes me special that has nothing to do with my body composition or how lean I am so the first thing I want to say is this is like a public service announcement that everyone should know your prep clothes should not fit you in off season and it sounds like it should be so simple but a lot of people including myself for weeks post-show and moving into off season we still try and squeeze into those tiny pair of jeans that tiny little top those like booty shorts that you wore when you were stage lean running around the gym and they don't fit. 
but they shouldn't fit because they are your prep clothes. They're for a prep physique. They're not for your off-season physique. So I think the first thing to do is to stop trying to squeeze into clothes that you wore during prep because they are not going to fit you. And it's a good thing that they don't fit you because it means you're healthy. It means you put on necessary body fat. It probably means that you've gained some muscle. You've got your shape and your size back. You've got your bum back. You've got your boobs back. You've got your curves back. So they shouldn't fit you because if they fit you in prep, they shouldn't fit you in off season. And that's something that sounds really obvious, but it's something we need to be reminded of because I think a lot of us are um, guilty of doing this, to be honest. Um, so that was one thing I did is just don't try and squeeze into your off season clothes or to your prep clothes and realize that, you know, wear things that suit your frame. Don't be afraid of buying the medium, the largest, the extra largest, whatever size you are. It's literally inconsequential because all that matters is how it looks on your frame. When someone looks at you, they don't ask you what label you're wearing, what what clothes size you're wearing. They just say, wow, she looks great in that pair of jeans or that top or whatever. They don't really care what the size is. So you shouldn't care either because all that matters is that it fits you and the clothes should fit you. You shouldn't fit the clothes. So that is the first thing I wanted to say. Um, the next thing regarding the pressure on social media, as I said, like I've always done check-ins. I've always done updates for everyone every single week because I am an advocate of everyone showing where they're at in their off season or in their prep or wherever they are at. I don't think that you should only show your prep physique on Instagram because number one, it's not realistic. And number two, I think for you as an individual, that makes you feel that you are only worthy of sharing when you're on prep or when you're lean. So I do feel like everyone should share whatever they want, whatever makes them feel good, whatever makes them feel comfortable. If they want to share their successes in off season, if they want to share their highs and lows of prep, absolutely. But I found that the pressure was just a lot. So I kind of decided to go partially incognito was how I, how I formed it, where I don't think people even noticed on Instagram. But basically what I did is I stopped posting anything current. Um, I didn't post any physique updates. I didn't post any selfies. I didn't I stopped filming myself in the gym because I was filming a lot of my training at the time. I stopped filming myself in the gym because I found I was overly critical of like, is that definition still there? Or do I look as lean in this video as I did in the same video last week? And I was comparing them and kind of watching my lines fade. And I find that quite difficult. So I stopped filming any training videos, stopped posting updates, all that kind of thing. And all I focused on was providing value. And that was in the form of podcasts. It was in the form of educational reels it was in the form of infographics literally anything I could share that could you know provide value to my my followers show that I'm a good coach show that I'm a good educator show that I know my stuff and kind of just prove to myself more than anyone that I had so much more to give than what my physique looked like and to be honest these days on Instagram like no one buys into you as a coach just because you have a six pack or just because you have definition or just because you're shredded it's more than that now. Like these days, you need to know your stuff. You need to be educated. You need to have the knowledge behind you. So I made such a conscious effort to just show that. And I, I checked in with Joe saying like, since I did that, I felt so much better because every day I was affirming to myself, I am more than my physique. I don't need to be stage lean because I'm giving all this value and all this content and all this information to people. And people are commenting saying, wow, that was so helpful. And I tried that in my training and I felt my muscle a lot, a lot more in that exercise or I was struggling with this and you made it better and all of these things meant so much more to me than anyone sending me a flame emoji for my physique or anyone saying wow you look shredded people telling me that I have improved their training or you know they can feel a muscle they didn't feel before or there something is growing that wasn't growing before or that I helped them in some way with their own physique development journey or with their own fitness journey means exponentially more to me than if someone just complimented my physique. So it really helped me realign with my purpose on the platform of Instagram or just social media in general, that I am there to provide value and content and help people because that is me in, in general. Like my vocation in life is to help others and to leave a mark knowing that I've contributed to helping others and whether that's through coaching and helping people achieve their physique that they want, whether that's through education to help others become better coaches or in my own profession, like in my day job, I work in clinical trials. So my job is to help to bring new and improved medications to people who are sick or dying and to improve their quality of life, to save their lives, to make an impact on the world. So in, in every single aspect of my life, that is my goal is, is to help others. Um, 
And by doing that, by removing the pressure of revealing my physique, it just, it all clicked for me. And honestly, it made such a difference. So, and again, I am not telling anyone you have to hide in off season because that's not the case. And I, I have since that period started to post more updates, more transformations of myself, more progress, or kind of just taking the odd selfie because I felt like it. And that's absolutely fine. You got to do what's best for you. But I just kind of felt I would share this revelation because I think people do feel a lot of pressure to share their whole lives on social media and just realize you don't have to. You can share as much or as little as you want. Whatever helps you is going to be the most important thing. So that was kind of the main thing that I found helped me kind of progress from the post-show identity and from feeling like I was stuck in post-show to transitioning into Holly is an off season and she is building muscle and she's getting strong and she is improving her physique. And that is another thing. Like I had to remind myself, look, my last season went so well. I was so happy. Like after three years away from stage to really make a mark to like place in every single show I did to bring my best physique. You know, I was so happy on the show days of how I looked, but if I want to be even better than that, I need to make the improvements. Like, you know, every single year, the bikini girls are getting better and better. They're getting more and more muscular. They're getting leaner and leaner. And sport is evolving. Like any other sport, you know, even in like, what well, I don't know anything about any other sports. So excuse me. But in sports like sprinting, people break the world record all the time because humans get better. Technology gets more advanced. We evolve as a human species. And that is just how it works. It's the same in the bodybuilding industry that people get better you know what placed what came first at the olympia 10 years ago probably wouldn't even place these days maybe not even get a pro card these days to be honest so the sport is evolving and with every year that the sport evolves you need to get better but you also need to get even better because you need to be a little bit ahead in order to you know win the shows do well or whatever your goal is with competing so for me if I want to bring a physique next time around that is even more competitive than the one that I had this time, I need to devote myself to an off season. And that means eating the food, training hard, committing to the phase and packing on the mass that I need because I'm still, I have developed a, a lot since my last seasons and since I first started, but I still have a way to go. Like I'm still not a big bikini girl. I'm still not in any way close to outgrowing the category. And I'm not even close to the top end of the category, to be honest with you. So in terms of my genetics and my capabilities of growing muscle, I need the time. And that is why I've decided not to compete this year. Like when I finished my show, literally, I think the day after I finished my last show of my last season, I said to Joe, so do you think I can compete next year? And he basically was honest with me. And he said, yes, if you want the same placings and if you want to look the same, then yes. But if you want to look better and if you want to develop your physique and potentially look at winning shows, then I would say no. Um, and that was a hard reality. That was a tough pill to swallow, but I took it on board and I've accepted it. And I know that this year is going to be committed to growth. And next year, maybe we'll look into a prep again. But that is kind of what you need to realize is that it's it's a whole process. And something I say to my clients, which I think helps me a lot, is whether you're in off season, whether you're on prep, your goal is always the same. So you're not ever switching the goal because the goal and the end goal is always the same. But the phase you're in to get to that goal changes. So your overall goal is to be lean enough and muscular enough and have the size and fit the criteria to win a show, win a pro card, whatever your goal is. But you spend time committing to building muscle and you spend time committing to dieting down. But overall, the goal is the same. So that's what I think is really important. Um. So where was I? I'm going to lose my train of thought. Another thing that really helped me progress from the from the post-show feelings of and the low I had was investing in a psychotherapist. And this is something that I am really happy because I think the stigma of mental health and speaking to people and, you know, hiring professional help has really been broken a lot. Like I speak about therapy and mental health and all that kind of thing with all of my friends, with my family, with everyone I know I don't think it's as much of a stigma as it used to be it's not really a taboo subject anymore like people used to not want to share that they had struggles with mental health because it was seen as a weakness um but they say you know you go for checkups with your doctor for your physical health why would you not do that for your mental health and it's absolutely true so I started working with a psychotherapist his name is James Elliott and he was actually uh, recommended to me by Christian which was super helpful so I started working with him in January and honestly, working with him has transformed my relationship with myself and kind of my belief in 
my abilities and what I was put on this earth to do and kind of finding my own happiness in myself and not looking for other people or other things to fulfill that happiness because I have that from within me and that has made a massive difference to my life so I would say to anyone if you are struggling with kind of who you are what your purpose is finding your happiness um and being okay being happy and independent then I would say reach out to someone like that because he has been transformative in my personal transition from post-show into off-season and just in life in general like feeling accomplished in my professional life feeling good enough as a coach as an educator feeling good enough in the industry uh realizing that competing is not everything and you have so much more to give like he made me write a poem about myself <laughs> to tell to tell myself um everything I was capable of and everything all the positives that are associated with me which obviously was a struggle for me to write but it was a really good exercise for me to reflect on, you know, I am not just a bikini girl. I'm not just a competitor. I am so much more than that. And I, I've worked really hard to develop other facets of my life to make sure that I have built a solid foundation and that I'm not building a house of cards where if you have this house of cards where all you all you eat, sleep and breathe is competing, then if the competing leaves or if the prep leaves, then the whole house of cards collapses. And I don't want that for myself. I want to build a solid foundation where I have many different facets and attributes in my life. Um, so I have a lot going on. And, and if one thing falters or if there's, you know, something falls apart, I have everything else. And that's what I've worked really hard to build. Um, so that all of those combined got me to a really good place. And I was feeling so happy and so content and so like satisfied with my life. Like my job was, I started a new job that was going really well. Like everyone in my job is so supportive. I was really enjoying the challenge of it because it's, it's a good bit more challenging and the studies are more complex than the studies I've ever done before. Um, and they're complementary. Like I've always, already been promoted to lead of one of the studies and I've only been there like three months, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. That's going really well. Obviously with the Physique Collective, that's going really well. And I'm doing frequent filming with Jake. We're going to all the events together. We have the support there and I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying that. Obviously, my coaching business, I'm putting so much effort into and work into to make sure like my clients are looked after. My service is as good as it can be, always looking to improve, developing my knowledge by continuing to enroll in courses and further my education and my learning in as, as much possible. I was actually speaking to my friend Jen about this today, that I feel that to feel fulfilled and satisfied in your life, you should be learning something all the time. And that doesn't mean that you have to be in the books. You don't have to be reading like academic books or reading research on PubMed it could literally be like learning to cook or learning how to bake or you know reading a self-development book or learning a new skill taking up knitting like she did like a some sort of hip-hop class the other day like pole dancing aerial like anything like that learning a skill I think is a crucial element to fulfillment in life and that's how I feel all the times so I'm always looking for something new to learn or develop a skill um, and that is just another tip for you. But so that was that. And then what started happening is that a lot of my friends who had started prep kind of the end of December were coming into shows in March and April. And I was super excited because I was happy in myself. I felt really content. I felt that my cup was full and I, I had filled up my own cup enough that I could pour my pour into other people's cups, if that makes sense. So I wanted to be the show day helper because they were my show day helpers. They helped me through all my previous show days, you know, they took my photos for me, they supported me, they helped me where they could, and I wanted to give back to that. So I spent a lot of weekends at shows, being the supporter, helping others, which I absolutely love to do. And I kind of discovered in myself that something I really value in a friendship with someone is the ability to provide for them and support them in any way I can, whether that's if they're going through personal issues, relationship issues, whether they want an Instagram girl on show day, whether they want, you know, me to pick out their jewelry for them like literally anything I love that and I get a lot of sense of purpose and fulfillment from being that friend and I hope that my friends feel that about me that I am there to support them because I absolutely am um but we had a lot of show days in succession and it got to a point where by the last show day I went to I just felt burnt out to be honest and I think it was because I was so happy and fulfilled and I was helping others and I was pouring into their own cups to the point where my cup ran a little bit dry and I didn't really notice that my cup was nearly empty until I kind of sat and stopped and thought and said I feel very depleted now and it was because while I was helping others I wasn't really looking after myself um, in terms of my own mental state giving myself a rest giving myself a break and kind of looking after my own needs 
that's why I decided, okay, I need to find this balance now because I love supporting others and I want to be there for others, but I also need to look after myself. And this is something that you all need to know as well, is that absolutely support your friends, help your friends where you can. Um, but you have to tend your own oxygen mask first, as they say, and that analogy rings true here. So I kind of took a step back to reassess that and what I wanted to do to make myself feel better and kind of bring myself back to the high that I was in back in March and April when I felt so good. I felt so confident. I felt really fulfilled in my job, in my coaching, in my business, like everything was going so well. Um, I was happy with my off-season body. So going to that, I kind of had to rediscover everything in my life that I loved. And this transitioned into this next phase. So I found that I had been in off season from middle of October, basically, until, what is it now, mid-April. So that was basically five months of massing. And I got to the point where I was just getting a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit kind of not feeling myself too much, like not really liking what I saw in the mirror. And I just didn't want to get to that super heavy point where I just felt awful. Um, so I said to Joe, look, I'm I'm feeling really uncomfortable. I would love to do a diet. And he basically said, yeah, I kind of agree with you here. I think it'd be a good idea to do a tidy up phase now, get you a little bit leaner and drop off some body fat before we kind of progress into the next massing block. Because if we didn't do this mini cut now, we would progress into the next massing block and we'd have to mini cut way too early. And it would just kind of stall progression when we need the time. So we decided to implement it now. So I basically took a decent calorie drop. So I went from 3,300 calories to 2,300 calories. Um, I think my macros are 164 protein, 334 carbs and 45 fat. That might not add up, but it sounds about right. Just for four weeks, just to do something for myself, uh, to take a little bit of a diet, to drop a bit of body fat, to feel good in myself and potentially do a photo shoot at the end of the four weeks where I feel a little bit leaner because I am a big advocate of doing shoots, whether you're in off season, whether you're in prep, like literally at any time, I think you should always celebrate your body no matter what stage it's in because you're always working hard and you always deserve to be celebrated. But I just felt, because I was eating so much food, I just always felt bloated. I always had a full belly. I woke up and I was full. I went to bed and I was full. I never felt hungry. I never felt like a desire to eat. And I just want to feel like a little bit tighter in myself just so I can like feel confident going into the shoot. So I think that's what I'm going to do at the end of the four weeks. Now, I'm not going to be shredded. I'm not going to be stage lean. I probably will have dropped maybe like, I'm hoping maybe four to five kilos. Um, So if we get down to that, I'd be really happy with that and I'd, I'd be happy to do the shoot then. But it was funny because I was at Joe's on the Saturday before I started the diet. He did my diet on the sun, on the Saturday. I started it on the Monday and by Wednesday, two days later, I'd already dropped like two kilos. And the difference in my photos from the week before is that was like so obvious. My midsection had just like sucked in. So he said to me in my feedback, he was like, I told you it wasn't body fat. Like obviously the two kilos in two days is not going to be body fat. But I was just holding so much fluid so much volume in my gut, like so all the contents of the food just sitting in my belly was obviously adding to that weight. And just to have that kind of flushed out, I already felt 10 times better. And I already feel so much better from just being in deficit and just feeling hungry. And like, you don't realize this when you're prep, but like when you're in off season, like it's quite nice to feel hungry because you feel, I don't know, it just, it feels nice to be looking forward to meals again and to be enjoying my food and to be kind of excited and getting hungry for my next meals. So that is the current phase that I'm at. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much my update in terms of everything. I do want to start bringing the podcast back more frequently. I've just been so busy, obviously starting a new job. I think I am also one of the only people I know in my little world in the industry that also still has a full-time job. So I'm the only person in the physique collective that has a quote unquote normal job, a nine to five or whatever hours it is. Cause it doesn't tend to always be nine to five, but anyway, um, I do a lot of travel for work and kind of balancing my main job with my business and with my coaching and with the physique collective and which posting on Instagram and everything I want to do, it does get quite busy. So I do want to devote time to this again. I do have more guests lined up again. Um, but if you do have any suggestions for guests, for topics, for anything you want me to speak about, please let me know. I do really enjoy doing the solo ones. And to be honest, I quite enjoy listening to solo podcasts because I love hearing updates on people's lives. I love getting to know them on a personal level. And obviously when I'm doing podcasts and I have a guest, it is more about the guest and getting to know them. But it, sometimes it's nice to get to know the host as well. So if you do enjoy these, please let me know. But if you did, tr what am I trying? I tried to say join and tune at the same time. So it was like, join. <laughs> if you did tune in to the episode and you enjoyed it, 
please feel free to take a screenshot, to put it on your story, to tag myself. I'm at Holly underscore Physique Collective on Instagram. I would really appreciate it. And if you could drop me a DM and let me know if you enjoyed it, what you'd like to see. Also, we're very lacking in the reviews. So if you could leave me a five-star rating and a review, I think I have one review on Apple Podcasts and it says that I have a nice accent, which I love because, you know, up the Irish and all that. And I'm glad I've kept my accent so far being in the UK. But if you could leave a five-star rating or review, I'd also really appreciate it because that obviously helps to build the podcast. Um, But yeah, guys, that is pretty much everything. I hope you enjoyed And if you want anything from me, you know where I am. So yeah, hope you have a great evening and I'll speak to you soon.